Hello everybody and welcome back. Let's talk about the problem single number 3. In this video solution, we are going to talk about bits based approach which is going to build on top of the single number 1 question. Now I'll highly recommend you go and watch that video first because that is going to give you the intuitions of how to even think in terms of binary digits as well as what to do once you have those. Okay, so go watch that video first and then come back to this because I'm going to use the solution and a bit of code from that question into this one. Cool, you're back. So let's talk about the problem discussion as well as a couple of differences between both of these single number one and single number three. Understanding single number three is very simple once you understand single number one. In single number one, we were given this non-empty array of integers nums and we had to find all of those elements that appeared once in the array. So a couple of elements will have duplicates and there'll be one element, one single element that appears only once. In the case of 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 4 was the element that appeared only once. 4 was the answer that way. In this case, instead of one element appearing once, there are two elements that appear once and the rest appears twice. So 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 5, has one repeating twice, two repeating twice, but three and five repeating only once. That's why three and five was the answer for this case. Okay, cool. So now let's jump into the solution. Okay, let's take a look at single number one and see what we can extract out from it. As we saw for the case two, four, three, five, two, four, three, the answer and the ZOR of all of these elements would be one, zero, one. And we also figured that ZORing all of them was a good idea. That's because all of the numbers like 2, 4, and 3, which have duplicates, got cancelled with each other. 2 got cancelled with 2. That's because the ZOR of 2 and 2 will give you the answer as 0. Similarly, the ZOR of 4 and 4 gives 0 and 3 and 3 gives 0. All of the elements having duplicates got cancelled out. The only element that was remained, the only element that was not present as duplicates got remained. And so in that case, 101 or 5 was the final answer. And in fact, I've implemented this part over here. And in the previous case, we could just return ZOR as the final answer. But things are not so simple over here. That's because of this case over here. We know for a fact that there are exactly two elements that appear only once. In this case, we only had 5 appearing once. But now we have a case like this where 5 appears once, yes, but there is also another element 7, which appears only once. And in that case, the ZOR wouldn't actually be 5 or even 7. The ZOR would be the ZOR of 5 and 7, which is 0, 1, 0. Now, this is clearly not the answer and we can't return it right away. We somehow need to extract out the information that 5 and 7 came together to give this number. But looking at 0, 1, 0, it's not very clear about how we can get these 5 and 7 back, right? Because when we ZOR all of these elements, 5 and 7's information gets lost and compressed instead of the 0, 1, 0 thing. What can we do from it? Well, let's actually put this, uh, formalize this. We have the mask, we have the ZOR with us, but the question is how do we get X and Y out of it? And one interesting point to note here is that only the differences between X and Y are shown. In the case of 5 and 7, which was represented as 101 and 111, only the disagreements between these bits are shown as ones over here. Whenever the two numbers agree on a particular bit, both of them having either 1 or 0, this is by the way the table you can refer, if both of these numbers agree on a bit, either being 1, 1 or 0, 0, both of them would give the answer as 0, which is why we see this 0 and this 0 over here. But whenever there is a disagreement, Whenever there is a disagreement like 0 and 1 or 1 and 0, the answer would be 1. So these differences looks interesting to me. We still don't know what to do with it yet, but maybe we are going in the right direction or maybe we need to completely ditch this. In fact, what we can do is we can realize that one of these numbers has the bit set and the other does not have it. And we want to keep that in the back of our mind. One of these numbers, whenever there is a disagreement in this bit, one of these numbers will have it set and the other won't have it. What we can do is to differentiate both of these numbers X and Y, we can filter out these nums. Okay, what does that mean? 
take the case of as we saw before 2435 2437 the zor gives 010 the number 2 again nothing too special out of it but uh, what do we do then well we can filter out all of those elements having the first bit set we know for a fact that because there was a disagreement between both of these numbers x and y on this particular bit this means for a fact that one of these numbers has this bit set which means that when we filter out all of those elements having the first bit set would get something of the sort where 2435 becomes 232372. Okay, just to uh, verify, you can go and look at all of these elements. So 2 gives 10 and 10 has indeed this first bit set, which is 2 over here. In the case of 4, it does not have its set and that is why it does not get filtered out over here. Like we'll throw 4 away because it's no use for us. 3, does 3 have this first bit set? Yes, it does have. So we'll put 3 in the list. 5, no. 7, yes. This is why you see 2, 3, 2, 3, 7. But do you see something else about this 2, 3, 2, 3, 7 list? This list is exactly the same as the problem we saw very initially. If we can find out the answer for this part, we've basically found the entire solution, right? From 23237, that problem is just single number one. Okay, I think the code will explain this a lot better, but basically what we're trying to do is, because we zored all of these elements, getting this 010 weird thing, which we can't really make sense out of, we saw that, you know what, there is this bit set, which means that there is a disagreement between the numbers, and we can filter out all of those numbers having this first bit set. We'll figure it out and filter out all of those elements having the first bit set, and we'll just apply single number one on this array. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is figure out the diff. So diff starts from uh, zero. Uh, we'll actually go and iterate it in the range of 0 to 32. We want one particular bit that is set and that's all we want. So we want to say if this particular bit at diff and uh, and the number zor is set, then break. So the diff will actually be a point of difference, a point of disagreement between x and y. What we do of that? Well, we can now iterate over all the nums again and we can say uh, filter out all of those elements having this bit set. So we'll do uh, one diff again, and we'll say if and is present. If this particular number has this diff bit set, which means that we can filter it out. And what does it mean when we can filter it out? Well, let's call this x equals to zero. And for this point, I'm going to do x zor equals to the num itself. In this way, I'm sort of filtering out all of these values, two, three, two, three, seven, and zoring them and putting them inside of x. So what do we do now? We have the x with us and we have the zor with us. We have the x now and we have the zor. Zor is just x zor with y. So what we can do is return x and the zor of zor with uh, x. Let's do a quick sanity check. And uh, we'll go and submit this out. As you can see, 7 and 5 come up over here. So we see that it is indeed accepted and uh, yeah, it's a bit tricky question, so don't feel bad if you can't solve it. Even I had trouble understanding why and exactly how we figured this diff and how we filtered out these numbers. Anyways, this is it for this video solution. And as always, thanks for watching.